richer than you know, and most are broke beyond your wildest dreams. So some are richer than you know, and most are broke beyond your wildest dreams. So um, I'm going to basically say cash has a new meaning. So let's look at that as an acronym, cash. First of all, cash, that's money that's available. Cash, C-A-S-H, money that's available. So whether it's in the bank, which obviously it's not a good idea to have your money in the bank. (laughs) Robert Kiyosaki said, you know, the old way of teaching is that uh, you would have money in savings. He said, but to have money in savings literally is to be losing money. So he said, you don't, when you have money in savings, you're not really saving. You're actually losing money. Well, first of all, because of inflation, you put money in the bank and uh, then inflation. So, and the bank now may give you, you know, 0.02% or 3% or, you know, if you have over $100,000, you know, uh, you can get uh, 5%, right, uh, in some places. But by the time you factor in inflation, you've actually, your money has been diminished. And so like some of these European countries, you actually now have to pay to put money in the bank. Uh, Well, my oldest son, Joshua, helped me to understand people that have money in savings today is like paying to put your money in the bank. When you factor in the little rate that they're giving you versus the inflation rate, it's like paying to have your money in the bank. But but, but at any rate, cash, uh, it's money that's available, whether it's in a bank, whether it's under a mattress, uh, by the way, let me back up too and say something about the bank because you know we teach on on some of these principles in our breakthrough money school um, that we you know do across the country. But at any rate, the 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 money um, that you put in the bank, think about this: they take your money and they loan it out to people at a rate of eighteen to twenty five percent using your money. Now, think about that now, and th- they use your money. And for every, get this now, dollar that you put in the bank legally now, <laughs> they can loan out to a hundred, up to $100 on every dollar that you put in the bank. It's fractional banking. It's, in other words, if you ever tried, for instance, uh, I, I got mad at the bank one time. I, I, you know, they, they were treating me like, you know, um, very unfairly. So I was like, you know what, okay, just just give me $20,000. I'm just going to take twenty. They're like, we can't do that. What do you mean you can't do that? We have to set up an appointment. And you have to give us time. What do you mean you have to? <laughs> I got a whole bunch more than that in the bank. What are you talking about? So in other words, as soon as you put your money in the bank, they they take your money, loan it out to other people. So, so you're, if, if at any given time, if just 10% of the people that had money in the bank would try to go get their money out, the, it couldn't happen. Right? It just couldn't happen. So, so just so you know, so when you put your money in the bank, they're loaning your money out to other people, making money off your money, and then they got the mitigated goal to give you 0.1 or 2 or 3% at the end of the year after they made all that money off your money. And then, and then they want you to use the credit cards where they charge, charge you absorbent um, fees. So, so there's some people, my friend, again, so, so again, cash, that's money that's available. So whether it's in a bank, under a mattress, in a safety deposit box, or your home safe. You know, a lot of people are opting out to have a safe in their own home, right? Um, that's that's cash. Then you have uh, so the C is cash. The A now assets. Assets. By the way, some people are cash um, rich and other people are cash poor. Okay, but then we go to assets, and some people are asset rich. Some people are asset poor. You know, some people are cash rich but asset poor. Other people are cash poor, but asset rich. And assets, those are multiple things. Uh, uh, of course, the latest and greatest would be cryptocurrency. That would be an asset. Uh, gold or silver, that's an asset. Equity in a house, that's an asset. Antiques, valuable antiques, those are assets. Uh, apartment complexes uh, or rental properties. Those are assets. Stocks or bonds, those are assets. Uh, antique cars, I've got a friend that's got over a million dollars in antique. And, well, not just antique cars, but, but cars, some of them antique, others just super fancy. But uh, 
but but that's that's some assets. Uh, I already mentioned rental properties, but land. Um, not long ago, was a good friend of mine, and uh, he, he invited Nadia and I over, uh, to, and uh, we spent a couple of days, and we were going through some of his property and his land. It was like, wow, it was like 12, did you say 1,200 acres? I'm like, no, no, 22,000 acres, <laughs> right? So that's that's a huge asset, land. Uh, what what about oil, especially here in Texas, right, and some other places across the country? And, you know, oil, that's, that's an asset. Uh, vending machines, an asset. A laundromat. Uh, if you own a laundromat, that's an asset, a storage facility, uh, especially the way people are transient these days, um, that, that's an asset. Or a store, right? Some people own a store. It's an asset. Uh, what, what about um, books? If you have a book and some people have a garage full of books or you have a bunch of books and, you you know, again, so those are assets, uh, books. That, um, you you wrote the book or you own a bunch of books and uh, new books rather and and uh, so so an essence of asset is anything or something that could be sold in exchange for cash so that's an asset um a royalties that you get that's an asset or guns i've got a friend that's got a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of guns He's, he converted his whole garage it's like a little gun shop it's incredible and he owns a gun shop by the way but his garage is this his personal, but anyway, um, but, 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 but incredible, but, but those are assets that can be sold. So again, anything that could be sold in exchange for money, uh, old money, right? Um, you know, old money is, uh, you know, if you got the two, $2 bill, the silver certificates and things like that, but old money, old pennies and quarters and things like that. Um, those are assets because it's something that could be sold in exchange for cash. Uh, foreign money, um, it's an asset. Uh, anyway, so so again, you got cash, that's money that's available, but then you got assets, that's something that could be sold in exchange for cash. And again, some people are cash rich and asset poor. Some are cash poor and asset poor. Some are cash rich and asset rich, right? And then the S is spiritual, spiritual, or spiritually. So so. You got the the spiritual. Uh, so this is peace. So so what price could you pay on peace? For instance, peace with God. Uh, then the peace of God. You know that's that's that, those are riches that a lot of times people in this world don't understand. But it's riches that some of you don't understand that you're more rich than you know. Um, joy. These are spiritual riches. Joy. What about the comforter? It's called the, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. The paraclete, the Greek, the one that comes alongside. Um, I have a friend that his, his wife of 43 years just recently passed. And, um, and you know, and people would think you, you'd go crazy, right? And and the Lord's given him again a, just a calm, just a peace in the midst in, during this time. Yes, he's hurting. Yes, he's missing his wife, but he's not losing it. He's not going crazy um, because at that particular time, my friend, there's a the, 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 there's a thing called comfort that comes from God, an inner joy, um, and it's it's a form of riches, my friend. The power of God. <laughs> what about prayer, right? The access to an almighty, all-knowing, owns everything God, and you can come, you can come and touch the hand or the heart of God through prayer. These are spiritual riches. Faith, by the way, faith is the currency of the kingdom, by the way. It's kind of like electricity that's invisible, but that runs everything electronic that is visible. <laughs> right? And, and that's what faith is like, right? I mean, it's like it, it, for a long time, people, they, they couldn't harness the power. Uh, they didn't understand electricity, didn't harness the power of electricity. And once they were able to do that, now, my friend, and able to capitalize off of that. Well, that's what faith is like in the kingdom. Faith is like electricity. It's the invisible thing, but it runs everything that can be seen. And literally, that's the currency of of the kingdom. So 
spiritual riches. What about Bible knowledge and illumination? I don't say revelation because there's only one revelation. It's just illumination upon what's already been revealed. But but to have the Bible knowledge, you know, there are people that, that are hungering and thirst man of they can just get a copy of the Bible, just get a page. Uh, but then to have Bible knowledge to actually know the principles that are contained and to have God illuminate your mind that as you read it actually you understand and it comes off the pages. What about the right to healing, right? <laughs> you know, with his stripes we are healed. I mean, I, I think some people don't understand how you've been so enriched that you have a right to healing, divine healing and deliverance. What about guardian angels? You're talking about rich, <laughs> spiritual, guardian angels. Now, my wife, Nadia, says I work my guardian angels over time the way I drive sometimes, but, uh, <laughs> but those guardian angels. Hey, hey, what about this? What about goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life? Right? That's why I, I wrote my Dr. Breakthrough Law, everything good that can happen will happen, and it will happen at the best possible time. And that, that doesn't always seem like that from my point of vision, but looking at it through the long term, through God's perspective, then I see and understand, yes, everything good that can happen will happen, and it will happen at the best possible time. It does that all the time. But, that's, but that you have to have spiritual eyes and understanding to really get and see that. So some people, these are spiritual riches. What about having your spiritual eyes opened, right? Uh, you know, before I read my Bible, I often pray, Psalm 119, 18, open thou mine eyes, and I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. It's like Elijah and, and the servant. He said, wait a minute, look at all these people that are against us. Oh, my goodness, uh, we're, we're you know, we'll never make it out. And he's like, and the, and the man of God prayed, said, Lord, open up his eyes. And when the servant's spiritual eyes, when his eyes were open that he can really see, then all of a sudden he's like, oh, my goodness, wait a minute. No, there's more to be with us than be with them. And the spiritual, to have your eyes spiritually open, my friends, and not just to see what's going on, but to see beyond what other people can see and actually see in the realm of the spirit. Those are spiritual riches, my friend. <laughs> What about spiritual gifts, right? He has all these different gifts. And what about the gift of imagination, right? Imagination, being able to, I mean, that's, 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 a, that's another gift. That's part of spirituality, right? What about heaven, by the way? It, it, I mean, that, that just takes the cake. That's all, that's a, it's all wrapped up in one. I mean, that's, that's incredible. So, so I, I was driving down the highway uh, a couple of years ago and, I said to my beautiful wife, Nadia, my ABCD, adorable brown caramel delight, I said, baby, I said, you, you are God's treasure chest. She said, ooh, that sounds good. What does that mean? <laughs> I, said, I said, God has deposited in you, you know, gifts, talents, and abilities. And as a matter of fact, he's deposited his own self, his Holy Spirit in you. So you are God's treasure chest, and so I want to make sure we just don't keep that closed, let it open, everyone, so people can see. But but God's treasure chest. And uh, we were driving down the highway one day. She said, you know, baby, I think God made me just for you. I was like, well, and he made me just for you too. But, but you know, when I think about, you know, I've got a wife that's, that's, that's I mean, when I say beautiful, oh, my goodness, beautiful, but but not just outer beauty, but the inner beauty. And there's some folks that don't have the outer beauty, but because of the inner beauty, they actually look beautiful. And there's some that have the outer beauty, but no inner beauty, and they look ugly. <laughs> ugly attitude, ugly spirit, ugly. But, but, but I've got the outer beauty. She's got the outer beauty, the inner beauty, the spiritual beauty. The, uh, you know, the other day I was like, baby, it's like, you're just like so innocent. I'm like, how, like, how do you get to be this age and you're like so innocent about it? He's like, well, baby, I am. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> you know, but, but it's like still like this childlike faith and this, this innocence about it. But I'm saying it, and, 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 and that's, that's a gift that brings me to the next thing, which, by the way, so, so again, some people, they got cash, but maybe they have no assets. Other people got cash. Uh, I mean, no cash, but they have the assets, and they just relieve some of those assets, right? And some people have uh, cash, and they got assets, but they have no spiritual. 
So so they're spiritually poor, right? Um, spiritually broke, um, and uh, and again, the riches are all available once you come to Christ. By the way, and uh, and then the fourth part. So we said C cash A assets S spiritual and spirituality, and then H, which I already kind of started on, and that's home and health. Home or health. So I'm, I'm spelling cash with two H's, by the way. So home or your health. So, by the way, my, my beautiful wife reminds me of this all the time. No amount of success in business, sports, or the church can compensate for failure in the home. And success in the home is the greatest foundation and launching pad for success in business, sports, and the church. Come on now. Can I, can I say that again? No amount of success in business, sports, or the church can compensate for failure in the home, and yet success in the home is the greatest foundation and launching pad for success in business and sports and the church or the world. So, so, so some of us, you know, some folks, they don't understand it, but to have relationships, enriched with relationships, your home, your if you got a relationship with a wife, uh, your husband, your children, your you got cousins and the, your extended family. I mean, some people. I mean, that's that's a riches that some people don't understand. You know, I was I, w- I was talking to a um, a multi multi billionaire uh, a couple of years back. It flew us Nadia and I in to see about working with the with the company that he was launching, and. Um, and um, I, I asked him a question. I said, and, and we were. I, I said, "Can you tell me about the worst day or worst time in your life?" And he looked at me and he's like, "Man, nobody's ever asked me that." I was like, "Well, you know, I, I can handle. It's easy to handle the successful days. <laughs> but take, I want to know what did you do in the your worst day or one of the worst times of your life." Um, and, and, and by the way, he's, he said to me, he said, I've never been asked that question. He said, but it's the time that I lost $400 million. I was like, with one day, <laughs> I was like, well, you have 400 million to lose, right? $400 million. And, uh, I said, well, well, how'd you make it out of that? How'd you? And he's like, well, he said, that's when you realize, really, it hits you the importance of your family, and losing riches, but understanding the richness, richness of relationships, the richness of those who really love you for who you are, not for what you have. And he said, the love of my family and faith helped me to make. Not just that, but a whole lot more back. Wow. The richness of home. And uh, we get into health, but my time is up. And so, again, we'll, so we'll cover a little more of this then tomorrow uh, and uh, give you some, some thoughts on this. Uh, but as we close out just for the day, so we're going we're gonna to challenge you. Uh, it's not about balance. It's about harmony. Because in an orchestra, each plays the individual parts, but they play together to have harmony. And I'm telling you, with Uplift, I'm glad to be connected with an organization and a company that's going to assist you in not just having cash, but producing also assets and spiritual riches, as well as riches in your home, enhancing your relationships, and we'll talk about also the health. So God bless you. It's uplift time as you break through, Shark Sharp. All right, 